All right, some of you might know or might have seen that I've been posting quite a few pictures of my paleo meals online on my Facebook page recently. I decided to take it one step further and now you guys get to watch me cook the paleo meals that I post on my Facebook page. So if you haven't been annoyed or bothered by any of that, now you get to watch me do it. And hopefully it gives you some good tips and pointers or you just get to watch me cook and sound like a big moron. But anyway, so tonight we are doing a tea roasted pork loin, a center cut pork loin. I have about a two, two and a half pound pork, two and a half pound pork loin. Uh, and that's gonna be tea crusted with uh, black tea. And that is gonna be served with a dried fruit compote and a warm savoy cabbage slaw. The slaw is more a half braised cabbage tossed with the raw savoy cabbage. So it's gonna warm that uh, savoy cabbage through, uh, the, the raw savoy cabbage through, and kind of give a nice mouth feel and you'll still have a little bit of crunch along with the uh, warm pork. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've already preset my oven to 425 because basically what I'm going to do is, I, or 450, I'm going to sear that pork for about 15 minutes on high um, and then I'm going to drop it down to about 250 and then it's going to roast for about an hour or so. First thing we're going to do is the dry rub. So I have one tea bag in here already and I'm going to put another tea bag in. It's a black tea. Uh, you can use whatever kind of tea you would like. Uh, you could use like a chai tea blend if you want. That's kind of the flavor that I'm getting at here, except I'm just going to mix it up on my own. So I have two um, bags of black tea. I'm going to throw a little cardamom seed in here, or ground cardamom seed in here. Remember, a little bit goes a long way, this stuff is strong. Mix it up here, see how, how where we're at. I'm going to throw a little bit of garlic powder. And just a couple dashes of ground cinnamon. If you want, you can throw five spice in there, Chinese five spice, all spice, kind of wherever you want to take it. I'm kind of going with a Indian Thai feel tonight. And then I'm gonna throw in about, I don't know, some kosher salt. Uh, I don't know, I went with like a quarter, quarter to a half a teaspoon and then just some fresh ground black pepper. I don't really measure anything, so I just kind of go with whatever I think is gonna be the right amount. I'd probably say it's about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of each. Start with the teaspoon and work your way up. So I'm gonna go with, this is probably gonna need a little bit more Cinnamon, I smell too. Touch more garlic powder and a little more salt. We got a lot of a lot of cardamom in there. Another dried spice that you can add in there would be um, dried ginger. I just don't happen to have any dried ginger. I do, however, have some fresh ginger. I'm just going to mince it up. Um, peel it and mince it up. Easiest way to peel um, fresh ginger, spoon. Just scrape it with the spoon. The peel comes off real nice. So we'll just finish this up. Now, don't worry about buying a huge thing of ginger in the supermarket. Just cut off what you need Go to rest back into your refrigerator. Stuff lasts for a pretty long time. Just cut off the dead end, move back in, and you're fine. I'm just gonna mince this up by hand. You can use a grater, whatever you wanna use. They make stuff specific for it. Remember, ginger is very strong, has a little spice to it as well. You can also use some fresh garlic if you don't want to use the garlic powder. 
So that's about a tablespoon. Just roughly chopped, I'm not really too concerned about it. So I've already got my oven all nice and preheated. Roasting pan, nothing fancy. I'm gonna throw a glove on because personally I don't like to touch raw meat. Why am I using the roast pork loin? It was on sale today at Stop and Shop if you really want to know the truth. What can you use this? What can you use this spice blend with? You can make individual pork chops, uh, roast pork tenderloin. You know, it's pretty much endless. You can do chicken, chicken thighs, whatever you want to do. Roast them, you can grill them, whatever. So I'm just going to kind of mix that ginger in. Start getting it. All nice and crusted on here. Top and bottom. Pour the rest. Don't forget the ends. Another thing you can throw on here. Get a quick little drizzle of olive oil just to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan. I'll just rub that in. It'll also help the spice rub to stick right on there as well. Again, I don't measure it. Just kind of go with whatever looks good. I'll we'll just give it a quick little pat. I'll show you what we're getting at. That's the pork loin. And it goes into the oven, 450. Oh, we'll say about, we'll set it for 15, we'll check it after 10, make sure it's not burning. If it looks like it needs to go a little bit longer, we'll let it go oh, until the 15 minutes is up. After that, we're gonna drop the oven down to 250, let it roast for about an hour. In the meantime, uh, sit back and relax. All right, so I'm back. Uh, my pork loin is in the oven. It's been about 40 minutes or so, 40, 45 minutes or so, and my pork loin is reading a temperature of about 130. I'm gonna plan on pulling it out around 150, 155 and letting it rest. And that way it'll carry over to a temperature of about 160. And that'll be done. Uh, in the meantime, since we're so close to almost being done, I'm gonna go ahead and get my um, warm slaw started. And I'm also going to get my fruit compote started as well. Uh, first thing I'm gonna start with is the warm slaw. I'm just gonna take you over to my pan. I just have a pretty big pan here and I've already as you can see, I have already um, chopped up some bacon and I'm going to render the bacon down. So I'm gonna go ahead over about a medium to medium high heat. Sorry, I gotta turn on my fan. Medium to medium high heat, I'm going to render my bacon down and I'm gonna draw out some of the bacon fat. Um, I'm also going to add just a little bit more bacon fat to give it a little bit of a head start as well. While that's working, I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping my cabbage. And I'll show you how I go and chop that cabbage quickly and efficiently. So as you can see, I've chopped quite a bit of cabbage, and that's really only about a half a head of cabbage here. And that's probably yielding about four cups. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how I chop this pretty easily, you know. Just gonna move your knife up and down. Most important thing when you're cutting or chopping, you notice I'm holding my hand kind of like a claw. My thumb is behind my fingers, my fingers are curled down. And that way, if I do happen to cut myself, I'm only gonna skin my, my knuckle as opposed to chop my fingers off if I'm going like this. So I'll do it slow and I'll show you my speed. You're just gonna draw your fingers down 